Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY, and today we're going to be putting the MED filter head kit onto my Classic Mini. So stay tuned. Alrighty folks, so if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw there are some things going on with my clutch, slave cylinder, the arm, and the plunger. Um, they all need to be replaced, but I don't have the parts yet. Those are all coming from seven mini parts. Those are on the way. So until those get here, I have a few other things that I need to do on the car. You'll probably see a couple videos come out before that stuff gets here. But until those parts get here, let's install this MED filter head uh, assembly. So on the Classic Mini, you have a filter head assembly. So let's get a little bit closer to this MED one so you can see it. Um, you have this filter head assembly and your filter gets screwed onto the bottom there. And then you have a takeoff and ordinarily that goes up to your top of your engine block into your oil pump, sucks the oil through here, through the bottom and through the filter and, uh, and through your motor, pretty simple. Now, currently on my car, I actually have an oil cooler. I picked it up from Mini Sport or Mini Spares years and years and years ago, way before I had this channel. And, uh, and I've gotten to the point where it's actually kind of a nuisance. It's really annoying to have in front of the car the way it is. Um, and I'm not saying all oil coolers are, are bad. Um, oil coolers are actually quite good, especially in the climate that I'm in right now. But this specific oil cooler has been driving me crazy. Lines are just too hard. Um, they're really hard to bend around and kind of get to where you want them to go. Um, everything just gets in the way and then with oil changes it adds like a bunch of time. So with winter coming around I figured it'd be a good opportunity to try out this new MED filter head as well as um, some nice AN line. So this is 8 AN. Um, I don't remember what size that is in inches or millimeters but um, this is the return line. So instead of having an oil cooler, um, which would come off of this end into an oil cooler, through it, and then back up into the, uh, the block, the engine, um, this is just a line that runs from the filter head up to the block. And I'll show you how to install this. It's pretty simple. But this is a lot tidier and really cleans up the engine bay as well as providing a larger diameter hose than the original stock fixed line. Um, the fixed line that was originally on the car, I don't even have one here to show you guys. It's been so long since I got rid of it. Um, it's a small metal hose and it works on stock cars. It works on stock 1275s and even some bigger bore 1293s. But this is gonna allow higher oil flow. And then later on down the road, um, once summer rolls around, I'm gonna see how this rolls without the oil cooler. See if my engine gets hot, if I have any weird issues like that. And if it does get too hot, then what I'm gonna be doing is adding in another new oil cooler that uses AN lines and adapts to this filter head. So one thing, if you guys want this oil cooler, it's gonna be on the merch store. I'm gonna start carrying spare parts from my shop, things that come off of my car that are still usable. Um, I'll probably include some stuff that might not be usable, might need some repair as well. All of it's gonna be pretty discounted and any of the discount codes that my patrons get or you get in your emails on the newsletters, you can use those on those parts. So keep that in mind. Let's head out there. Let's start taking out the oil cooler and then I'll show you the old filter head and we'll take that off too. All right, now before we get started pulling anything off of the car, keep in mind this is your oil system, so you probably will get oil on your hands, which is why I'm wearing gloves, and uh, you probably want to put an oil pan underneath your car. If your car hasn't run in a little while, the oil has probably settled down into the sump and should, should not spill out too much. Obviously, if you have an oil cooler on your car already, um, there is oil in that oil cooler. And then your filter system probably has oil in it too. Now, in my case, I'm gonna be reusing that oil filter that I have on there because I'm not quite ready to change the oil after the engine break-in. I still have to drive it a little bit more. Um, so I'm gonna be keeping the filter that's on there and uh, hopefully I won't lose too much oil and we can get this properly sealed up. Now, worst case scenario, we might have to get our oil drain pan and uh, collect the oil out of this car and then we might need to put new oil into it, but I'm hoping that I won't have to do that. So. First things first, we need to disconnect this adapter from the block here. And uh, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about that when we put the MED one on. And then of course, we're gonna be disconnecting the hose that goes down to the filter head. So I'll bring the camera down there. I'll show you here in just a sec.
All right, so now you guys have a good view of the old filter head. And as you can see, the filter head, well, holds the filter. Now, the old one has something called a bypass in it. And I'll show you guys that once I get it off here, um, when we're comparing it with the new one. But to get it off, you simply need to take out these two bolts here. And I think what I'm actually gonna do is take out these bolts and uh, take the whole thing out with the filter and the line on it. Hopefully that will be a little less messy. Um, but who knows, maybe it won't be, we shall find out. All right, so now we have got this head out of the car. Let's take a little closer look at this so you can see what's different about this MED head. Now, as you can see here, there's a little ball valve inside that filter head. And what that's for is, well, it's a bypass. And so what's happening is oil is going in right here down through this hole, through the whole filter, and then being sucked right through this small hole out and into your motor. It's pretty straightforward. And actually, it's pretty crazy looking at that little hole. That's a tiny hole, isn't that nuts? And what happens, what this bypass valve is for, what it does is it actually allows the oil to pass by this filter without ever getting filtered. And that's good in the sense that your engine would never be starved of oil. However, the likelihood that a whole filter would get blocked is also kind of slim. So what the MED race head does is it removes that bypass and only allows oil coming through the filter to go to your motor, which means that you always are having filtered oil. And as you can see, this hole right here, much, much larger. So a larger volume of oil is allowed to pass through and there's never gonna be a scenario where you'd be delivered, well, unfiltered oil. So also it has the benefit of looking much cooler. Now there's been a lot of discussion about this. In fact, I have asked people about a bypass valve and whether you need it, whether you don't need it. And what it boils down to is a couple of things. One. I daily drive this car, but I'm also religious about cleaning the oil and replacing the oil. So if you're kind of maybe not up on cleaning your oil, making sure there's not a lot of debris in it, things like that, you know, changing your oil regularly, probably want a bypass valve. It allows you to be a little lazier. This is just my opinion. Obviously, I want to hear from you guys in the comments. What do you guys think about these bypass valves? But for me, I wanna know that the oil that's being delivered to my motor is always filtered. And a pro tip for you guys who haven't actually seen my oil change video, it's really, really old, so I'm not actually gonna link it to you guys. I've been wanting to redo that. I would put a magnet on the bottom of my filter here. This is a neodymium magnet. Uh, I'll put a link to this in the description. Basically, it's just a really freaking strong magnet. And uh, what it's gonna do is help collect any metal shavings that obviously a magnet can get in the bottom of that filter. So with all that, let's get back out to the car and uh, we're gonna use this new mounting hardware it came with as well as this new gasket and then get all this stuff installed. All right, so now we are back out at the car here and the next step is to prep that surface for a new gasket. And as you can see, a little bit of my old one tore off even though it was brand new. Um, and uh, I'm going to take a small razor blade and just razor blade the rest of this stuff off and, um, and get this nice and clean for the new gasket. All right, so now with all that gasket off, the next thing that we wanna do is clean up that surface so that the gasket sealer that I use is gonna bind really nicely to the metal. And I like to use brake cleaner because it's a solvent. I spray a little bit on a rag and then I give this a nice rub down. Um, the key here is that you really don't want brake cleaner inside your oil system for pretty obvious reasons. It's not a lubricant, like even in the slightest sense of the term. And when you spray it on a rag like this, you get a nice cleaning rag and then there you go. Now you have a non-oily surface. All that oil came off. And, uh, and now we can get our new gasket and our new mounting system and get it all hooked up. All right, and so just like normal, I always add this gasket sealer to my gasket. So we'll go ahead and add a little of this Permatex here. Um, and this just gives me a little bit of peace of mind knowing that there's a liquid seal in addition to this cardboard seal here. And 
going to rub that in real nice and good. And so what you'll do next is go ahead and push that on there. This Permatex seal also has the added benefit of making it easier to do that. And then we'll take our brand new filter head and put that on one screw at a time. Now next up, we are going to want to install our little AN adapter here onto this filter head. Go ahead and screw that sucker on. Now, if you're a frequent user of AN lines, you'll know that this is not what you should be using in order to tighten these down. Um, you should be using an AN wrench. That is going to prevent it from marring. However, I do not have one of those, so we're just gonna use this adjustable wrench here to tighten the sucker down. Make sure it's nice and tight. Great, so that is now good and tight. The next thing that we're gonna wanna do is put the block adapter in. Now, there's a few important things about this little block adapter that we're putting in here. And Really, the important thing is that the hole right here is different sizes depending on the engine block that you have. Since this is an A-series block, it's one of the older blocks, it means that this hole, if I remember correctly, is smaller. So, this adapter, which MED has a few different versions of, you'll need to make sure that you tell them that you have an A-series block or an A-plus block. This will make sure that this adapter fits properly in this little hole here. All right, and so now once you have that nice and tight down on there, notice that I did include a washer. This washer comes with the kit. Um, it's extremely important. This is a very frequent place for uh, oil to leak out of. The next step is to simply install your fancy new AN line here, which I'll go ahead and do now. All right, and the last thing that we're gonna do is put this filter back in. And like I said, I put a magnet right on the bottom of that filter and look how easy access is for this thing now. Oh my gosh, it's so wonderful. All right, and with that, we have our new housing installed, our new filter, well, our old filter that I was using before, our new line that's connected to the block. And with that, this job is done. So let's head back into the garage and we can finish this up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this episode of Classic Mini DIY. I hope you found that helpful. It's a quick little job and it really tidies things up and uh, makes things just easier to work on in the future. Also, that extra flow is gonna be really nice. Just a reminder, if you guys want any spare parts that I'm using on this channel, I will be listing them on the merch store going forward. There's only a couple on there right now, but expect a lot more here in the near future. If you have any questions about this episode, post them in the comments section. Also, I'd love to hear your opinion on this new filter head. What do you think about the no bypass valve, um, no oil cooler? I'm interested to see how it works and runs on the car, but I also really value you guys' opinion on this. So until the next video, which should be pretty cool, I think you guys are gonna like it. Um, until then, enjoy those minis and motor on.